just really quick before we jump in and get started, you guys, there is, uh, um, Danielle is already on it. In the chat, I've put my email, jgrayatmideo.com. Um, you can hit me up there anytime. Uh, I'm usually pretty good at being responsive. If for whatever reason I'm not responsive, it's don't make it weird. Just send me another email. I promise you I'll try and get back to you. Um, uh, it's, it's pretty busy these days, but uh, but uh, you, I've been a pretty, pretty good at getting back. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a history of who I am. Uh, as I said, my name is Justin Gray. I am a songwriter, record producer, uh, and uh, I am the founder of Midio. Um, this was put together as a frustration that I was feeling as a songwriter, uh, wanting to try and uh, have a platform where I could organize my music, I could find other collaborators, I could tag my other collaborators in my music, uh, and just create something that was um, a little bit uh, better at helping me organize. Because if you guys are like me, um, I really love writing the songs. I don't particularly like the administrative part of the, of the process. So I thought, how do we make this easier, a little bit sexier, a little bit more streamlined? And, uh, and of course, um, adding elements like metadata um, and, uh, and, and pitching and opportunity. So this is what we're building here. Uh, I'm really grateful that you guys are spending your Saturday morning with us here uh, for the next uh, 56 or so minutes. Um, we're really trying to build a community here. You know, internally we have something called Operation Snowball, which is we just want to build and build and build and help us grow and help you guys grow and help you guys find and generate um, revenue with this you know awesome platform we're building. So thankful for your for, for your attendance here this morning. A little bit of quick history. As I said, I am a songwriter and record producer. Uh, I do a lot of work in film and television. Uh, I have, uh, if you guys have kids at all, you're probably going to be super annoyed because I just wrote the theme song for a new Netflix show that's coming out called Big Tree City. Uh, um, and um, yeah, you'll probably hate me for that one. But uh, if, if, uh, but, but, but I'm happy about it. Um, but I do continue to work with uh, major artists, uh, and I'm currently published by Downtown Music Publishing. So. Um, there is, uh, I, I'm, I'm working, I'm one of you guys, I'm a working songwriter and producer. Uh, and, um, you know, my goal every day like you is to wake up and, and, and think about how I push my career forward and, and create opportunity um, with the music that I'm writing. So, welcome. Um, we are going to today, actually, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug a couple quick things that we're doing uh, in the next couple weeks. One thing that we have, um, based on some user feedback from you guys, uh, is we do something every second Friday called Feedback Friday. It's a Facebook Live where we take six songs uh, that, have, well, we get usually more, but six of the songs that are submitted uh, and we basically do feedback and critique um, and, uh, and with, with the goal of trying to improve the songs. And uh, oftentimes, most of the time, we have uh, active a and R people, music publishers, uh, people from record labels, uh, artist managers, songwriter managers that come in and provide feedback. Uh, the goal is twofold. One is to actually get great feedback, but two is to hopefully identify new opportunities and create uh, a, a, you know, create a network effect uh, for what you guys are doing. We're seeing an incredible um, response and reaction uh, for that as well. So by all means, please submit. You'll see usually um, you could submit within uh, a project within Midio and we'll show you that. We'll show you all of that stuff. Uh, so please do that. Also, um, as part of your attendance here, you are also really part of what we're calling sort of like our Media Plus team, which is uh, we have a um, various events. Uh, again, I saw Glenn earlier this week at, or last week at our Media U event, uh, which is basically open forum webinars. Uh, and also we have something called Media X, which is our songwriting um, collaboration event, which is basically you guys come in, we write songs, of course, over Zoom. Uh, we write songs and we have mentors and successful songwriters that come in and co-write with you and, and really help write and craft better songs. Uh, oftentimes we do those with briefs in mind. Uh, so this coming upcoming video X, uh, we're also going to be collaborating with Wendy Griffiths, who is a tremendously successful um, song plugger for film and TV will be writing to some of her briefs. Uh, and so if you haven't signed up, I urge you to sign up for a Medio X event, which is happening on October 2nd. Uh, anyway, let's jump in. I'll probably talk about that a few more times, um, but um, let's go for it. 
So let's go through uh, Midio. This is a Midio A to Z webinar. Uh, we're basically going to show you, give you an overarching view of how to use the platform. Again, you have my email in there. Please hit me up anytime. Uh, we have other members from our team here as well. There's Adam, um, who if you've ever entered any um, questions in our intercom system, he probably answered them for you. Uh, and then we have our a and director, uh, Carrie, who is also on the line here. So she is our uh, frequent participant in our Feedback Fridays. So let's jump in, everybody. Here's where we'll pop in some clever theme music. Doop, 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 doop. Anyway, if you haven't, here's what you do. You go to wearemideo.com, and then you can log in. You are a member. You click Members Login. Boom. You're in the platform. I've already logged in. You jump in. Here you go. You're now going to see your main... Uh, um, uh, 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 interface, you can pretty much do 80% of everything that you need to do from this main interface. So if you've not yet uploaded a song, let's literally start there. There's two kind of cool ways to do it. One is you can go add tracks, select tracks, import the song, right? So we'll just do that. Boom. I'll open that. You're going to see it's importing. I can actually close this window. It's going to import in the background. So even though you don't see it right away, don't worry. It's actually importing. It's actually coming in. Um, I'm going to do it a different way, though. Uh, I'm going to uh, take, for example, uh, this is a project I'm working on here. Uh, there we go. Uh, these are some mixes in progress. I'm going to highlight all of these songs, right? Five songs. Boom. Drag, drop. You can literally just do that. And again, like I said, close that up. Those songs are going to be uploading in the background. You don't have to worry about that. I promise you they're going to show up. You can kind of do all the rest of the stuff that you need to do. It's just going to keep constantly refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. There's a couple of things that I think are really cool to notice here. For example, I'm going to, I'm going to open up this song here. There we go. Um, five o'clock. Perfect. So this song, as it's being uploaded... You can see there's a, there, there's a bunch of data and information here. Now we're gonna go back to some of the songs that we just uploaded to show you how we actually enter that data and information, right? But here's what I wanna show you that's really cool. We have this thing called emotional an emotion analysis. We'll get back into that a little bit later, but just as sort of like the precursor for, you know, I don't know, 34 minutes from now. Every song that gets uploaded to Midio gets actually analyzed and we attach 10,000 different data points to every song. So that's how we determine the emotional quotient of a song, the EQ. We then use that as well to create a dynamic um, uh, relationship between song to song. And that's how we create playlists and that's how we create our, our discovery tool uh, in Hyper Audio that we're gonna be launching before the end of the year. So again, we'll get into all of that as we go. Guaranteed promise. Here's some of the other cool things that are coming in uh, that you are going to see as your songs get uploaded. Uh, I did not enter this information. It already pulled in the title of the song, who the artist is. Uh, I created a sounds like or similar to, but I'm going to explain how that works with Hyper Audio. That's pretty cool. Uh, it determines which what main instrumentation is in the song automatically. You don't have to do any of that stuff. If you wanted to, you can add to that or you can adjust it, but you don't have to do it. It automatically determines the time signature. It, automatic de it automatically determines the tempo. Um, these things are actually really, really important because when you're dealing with music supervisors, they might automatically want to make sure that, oh, we've already tempted in a song that is, you know, if you guys were at, uh, at, at, our, at our music publishing and sync uh, video U event, you'd know, but they'd want to temp in a song and they'd want to make sure that the tempo is similar so that they can don't have to recut everything. Um, you then add your own tags. Uh, you add any of the publishing information. If you are already, uh, all of your information is already in, which again, we'll show you, um, it will automatically attach to every song. And there's just a bunch of data and information that's already in there. And we're going to go through all of that. Let's go back to our main uh, page here because we've uploaded all of these songs now, right? We've uploaded Take It Easy, Spread the Love, Beautiful Day, Keep It Moving, right? These are the songs that we just uploaded. Let's open up Spread the Love for a moment. I'm going to click that song. Now we we haven't done the analysis yet because it actually is takes a it usually takes a little while, um, but take that song for example. Here's spread the love. Here is all of this information that is already embedded in the song. So if you're a producer and you're exporting your music out of any digital workstation, you are actually putting certain bits of metadata already into a song. Probably the title, right? Maybe who the artist is. But let's go in and start adding our metadata. Now, again, when you look at, uh, you know, you talk to songwriters, 
you talk to uh, creative people, metadata is really one of the crucial elements in making sure that you guys are going to get paid down the line. So it's really simple. You click this little cool pencil, you open up this window, edit track metadata. Well, I'm going to say this song sounds similar to, ironically, also Sublime, same artist. Um, and uh, I'm not, I don't have to worry about the key. We're going to automatically determine that. I'm not going to have to worry about the instruments. We're going to automatically determine that. I'm not going to worry about the time signature. I am going to rate it because I think everything I do is a five out of 10 as a five out of five. <laughs> Other people think what I do is a five out of 10. I think it's a five out of five. Um, and again, same thing. Don't worry about the BPM. We're going to determine that for you. Now, here's what's really important. I'm going to create my tags. So I know that this song, for example, is pop. I know that this song is male. I know that this song is mid-tempo. I know that this song is acoustic, right? I know that this song is fun, right? Anyway, you can kind of keep adding these words. You can also go down the list and find anything that you think uh, also applies. Retro, um, I'm gonna say uh, it is also organic, right? It's also warm. You can keep, whatever, the list goes on and on and on. Honestly, the more tags that you add, the more higher likelihood you will have in getting those songs discovered through hyper audio or also when you're yourself searching. Um, I'm going to say it's funky. I'm going to say it's a positive message. Uh, I'm going to say it's heartfelt. I'm like literally going on and on, right? Simple, right? Uh, it is not particularly ratchet. Um, you get the idea, right? So once you close that out, you've added all of your tags you actually don't have to add your publishing info because you've already added that. Again, we will go back to your profile that I'm gonna help you guys get set up as we do this, where you enter this information so it gets hard, it's get, it gets um, automatically attached to every song you upload. Um, you could choose your, again, you could predetermine your PRO. In my case, I'm BMI for this. Um, and then, now here's something that some people use, some people don't use, <clears throat> catalogs. So we've actually created a way for you to identify what songs belong to what partnerships. You know, we work with a lot of people that, let's say, have um, different partnerships, different relationships with, you know, these are the songs that, you know, we mentioned Wendy, for example. These are the songs that I partner with Wendy on. But, <clears throat> excuse me, these are the songs that I don't have a partner on. So you can actually move songs from, from catalog to catalog. In my case, uh, these are part of my 72 songs catalog. I can enter any terms of use. I could say, hey, um, uh, uh, please don't use this for uh, political, alcohol, you know, whatever. You can create any sort of uh, terms that you want to make sure so uh, you, you can uh, um, if essentially uh, limit where you might want your songs to be used down the line. Again, it's not uncommon to exclude things like, you know, alcohol or political affiliations or any of those things. Uh, and then... You enter what's called label copy. So I could say connects is the artist here. We know that uh, the lyrics, I can add lyrics. I can add any information. We can see here, again, important information here. Every songwriter, if you're not affiliated to PRO, please do so. You get what's called an IPI number. That is an identification number that says, hey, Justin Gray, and by the way, I've had this ha issue happen to me because there's other Justin Grays, believe it or not. I'm not the only um, songwriting Justin Gray. Uh, they know that every song that is 275-382054 is the me Justin Gray. It's not the other Justin Gray. Uh, does it contain a sample? Yes or no? No sample, right? And then there's a button here, register with PR, registered with PRO. I can make a determination if this song has actually already been registered at my PRO. I'm going to save that information. You're going to see it's going to refresh. Boom, there it all is now. It is now all searchable. So if I'm looking for warm, simple, fun songs, guess what? I'm going to discover the song Spread the Love. I'm going to now do a couple cool things here. I'm going to add my collaborators. Um, I click that button. I know that I wrote that with Kenny Mullins, right? I'm going to go search for him, find him. There he is. Add. I've just now added him as a collaborator. I know that I also wrote this with my friend Kiki. So I'm going to go search for Kiki. I'm going to find Kiki. There she is. By the way, side note, we met Kiki because she submitted a song to a project on Midio. It turned into a publishing deal, and now I collaborate with her all the time. She's a fantastic songwriter. So she really did find the benefit of, um, of, 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 of working with Midio and then connecting and, and, and now collaborating. So I'm going to go edit those splits. I click edit the splits. I'm going to add my 33 and a third. 
Now, typically for me, what I do is in my universe, if I'm collaborating with three people, we split three people, we split it three ways. The artist gets the extra one one hundredth of a percent, 33.34. Save splits. Okay, now what I've done here is really cool. I've created this data set for this song, but what I've also done is because I've tagged Kiki and Ken as collaborators, this song is now automatically in their database with all of the same metadata and information. Very, very important because as I talked about, and as we talked about, I hate doing admin, but now what I've done is by uploading the song, I've actually reduced my share of admin requirements. Now, Kiki has an obligation to do some admin, Ken has an obligation to do some admin, and, and we can all share it. Now, if they pitch the song, I get notified. If I pitch the song, they get notified. We are all connected now in one location on a song. Why is this so important? This is so important because when the song gets registered at your PRO, and you could do it here, by the way, and we'll, we will go through this in a moment, right? You can actually register the song directly to your PRO if you wanted to this way. Let's go backwards again, though. I'm not going to, we're not going to get sidetracked on that quite yet. Um, let's say I've called the song Spread the Love. <clears throat> And Kiki is called the song Spread the Love, T-H-A. And let's say uh, Kenny has called it Spread the Love, L-U-V. And we all register these songs to our PROs. We won't get paid. That information is not correct and accurate. Let's say when they add the different Justin Gray with a different IPI number, we won't get paid. So what we are essentially doing is warehousing all of the song and information in one spot so that this is the defining point of truth for every bit of audio. Of course, obviously, here comes the song. I'll just play it. So anyway, the song's there, of course, we can, we can, we can add, um, uh, we can start pitching. Now, I want to show you something else cool that we could do. We have track versions. If I wanted to add another track version of the song, I go open that, I'll go look for, um, let's see here, uh, going backwards here. Um, I'm going to go to Mullins. Uh, I'm going to go to spread the love. I'm going to go spread the love mixes. I'm going to say, uh, that's what we just did. Here's the spread the love demo. I'm going to open that up. I'm now adding the spread the love demo to the song. So you can actually keep all of the different iterations of the song in the same, uh, it, within the same window, within the same set of information for this song. Why is that important? That is important because when you're pitching music, always always this is not really about midi a to z this is more like a general thing always have an instrumental on hand always be ready to pitch that instrumental always have that available because when music supervisors go oh i love this song spread the love can you get me the instrumental because sometimes they'll want to cut in maybe they'll just want to keep the chorus but they'll want to have the verse or maybe they'll just want to loop the chorus but only have it happen with lyrics sometimes but not all the time right they, you need to give them the flexibility to be able to cut around your song so just Side note, always make sure you have instrumentals. So that's how you upload songs. Let's go backwards a little bit, right? Let's just back this up a little bit. I'm gonna go to uh, your profile. So again, just to do this again, uh, top right corner, the little avatar, look at that handsome guy. Um, this is your profile. So set this up right away when you log in. Why is this so important? Uh, it's important because when you pitch a song, I'm gonna look, I see Duran, right? So I see Duran's name here. When you pitch a song and you want to make sure that they see your bio, they know who you are, they 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 are aware of you. This is a bio, this is your, your calling card. So fill in your bio, you put in all of your general basic information. If you have none, you put none. Here's all of these different publishers that we work with. Um, again, uh, you you may or may not uh, be in there, but if you could put in none, you could do whatever you want. You can assign that. That hard, that information connects hard to your uh, um, actual profile. You enter your B, you enter your PRO. Again, we have all of the PROs here within the comp with, with not all of them, but a lot of these PROs that we're partners with. You can add any additional publishers. Now, in most cases, you are your own publisher if you if you're not published. Again, if you are assigned to a PRO, you get your PRO member ID and you get your IPI number. Put that information in there. That is connected automatically to your every song that you upload. Uh, you can enter your administration, your, your administrative partner. You can create your public or, pro, or private profile. This is really important too. So if your profile is clicked private, it means that your songs cannot be accessible to 
outside people. If you are, if you click that off, it means that your songs are accessible to people that are searching and potentially wanting to discover and license your songs. Completely up to you. I personally keep my profile private, but I do unlock it from time to time. This does not prevent you from pitching to, to opportunities or, uh, or briefs that come up on the platform. So if you're private and you see a brief and you submit a song, that song still gets submitted. It's more for our Hyper Audio um, website that we're going to be launching uh, in, uh, in, you know, hopefully again before the end of the year. Um, if you're if you're private, your music will not be discovered through Hyper Audio. If you are if you are public, uh, then it will be. Again, completely whatever uh, you choose to do. Uh, again, general information website. Some stuff that's just kind of silly is like, what do you want your first page to be when you log in? You can set it to whatever you want. I just keep it at home. Boom, save. So I've now saved that in my um, in my bio details. Then we have other information. We have different user details and different information. This is a way for us to get in touch with you. Uh, we have billing information. This is a way for us to uh, pay you. We have cloud sync configuration. This is stuff that we're working on. So let's say if you have your music uh, um, uh, uh, housed on Box, Dropbox, or whatever you know, Google Drive, right? Whatever One OneDrive. Um, you can actually link and configure those drives to to uh, to your video uh, profile again, so it can save you from having to upload things twice or put them into two different places. Um, manage notifications. Okay, so uh, what we have here is a whole list of all of the different notifications that you get, and these continuously get uh, updated. Um, I personally prefer one summary email every day that tells me about all of the activity that's happened on platform. Um, if you have set that up, make sure to just go check your spam. We want to make sure that you're getting these, um, these notification emails. Uh, you can also adjust what it is that you want to be receive notifications on. So for example, I want to note, I want to be notified if somebody sends me a message. I want to be notified if somebody pitches my song. I want to be notified if someone's added me, added me to their network. And again, we'll go through all of this stuff. Uh, so this will all make sense as we um, continue moving forward. I want to be notified if someone has requested to be on my team. Again, this is why the bio is so important. If you pitch a song, I'm looking at Rob, for example. If Rob pitches a song and Toby gets it and goes, oh, I like this guy, Rob. He's really great. Hey, I want to be on his team. You you can effectively grant them access to be able to go in and search your, your database on their own privately. So it's great if you build relationships with music supervisors or with a &R people or with, uh, you know, people like Wendy, who is a uh, um, song plugger. Um, it's a great opportunity to expand your network and your team of people that can help you get your music placed. Um, I want to be notified if, if if somebody has pitched a song that I'm a part a part of. I want to be notified if a song has been you know downloaded, if a pitch has been updated. I want to be notified if the you know anyway. You, you guys are smart. You, you can go through and you can see all of the different um, notifications that you can get. Go through. And, uh, and if you have any questions, hit the intercom button at the bottom. We'll be sure to get back and give you as much support uh, as we can. But it's really simple. Again, notify me if a song that I wrote is on somebody else's playlist that got share out, shared elsewhere. Uh, again, part of as a songwriter was how do we create transparency between collaborators? And that was a huge, huge part of, uh, of what we're doing here. Um, I see Doran. I know that I know that he is a um, a member here. So I'm going to, for example, I'm going to add Doran here as a collaborator on this song. So D O uh, uh, R O H N. Look at this guy. I love that. I love that man. We, how do I get one of those? That's very cool. Uh, I'm going to add Doran right there. I've now added him, added, added him, added him uh, as a collaborator. What's cool is when he logs into his profile. He's going to see that song now in his database. He hasn't done anything. I've just added him there as a collaborator. I'm actually going to take you out of there because my other collaborators just got notified saying that I've just added you as a collaborator. Um, so that's kind of the basic overall with how do we upload a song? How do we add our own track metadata? How do we uh, set up our profiles? How do we add second versions um, and additional track versions to songs? Um, how do we add uh, our collaborators? Um, and lyrics is really easy. You just open that up. You, you, you can just copy and paste your lyric. 
you save that, that all becomes searchable. So any of this information becomes totally searchable when you're looking for finding songs within your catalog. Um, it happens to me a lot where people are like, hey, we need to find, you know, um, positive songs about being happy, right? So I can type positive, happy, boom, I'll find all of that, all of the songs without having to think about it. Um, here is a couple other things. Anytime that a song is actually used, right? You click that, you enter all of the relevant information on any sort of exploitation. You save that, that, oh, I'm going to close that. You save that. We all co-share this information. Um, we have something called tweaks, which has allow, which allows us to, hey, all love this song. Oop, let me spell that right. Uh, I post the tweak. This is just a way for us all to communicate like a, a comment section on every song. Again, uh, use it, don't use it. And here's additional data. You might say, um, you might want to put your phone number in there uh, just as additional information. You might want to say, uh, I don't know, your birthday, <laughs> whatever, whatever you might want to do. I don't know. Uh, you save that. This all gets embedded. So whenever anybody downloads a song, all of this information is also in there. So let's go back here and let's talk about things like searching and finding songs. So let's say I want to go, hey, I want to find my hip hop. Let's start with hip hop, right? So here comes all of my hip hop songs that I've written. Now, here's what's cool. Emmanuel Ca Casimiro, who I, I don't know, um, I've been added to their team. So I can actually listen to their songs. I can't pitch them. I can't do anything, but I can listen to those songs. But let's say I'm, here's my list of all of these different songs. These are all my different hip hop songs. But let's say I go, mm, you know what? I actually want to find only my hip hop songs that I wrote with my friend Evan. So I can write hip hop Evan. Oh, here comes all of my hip hop Evan songs. But let's say I go, well, I only want to talk about my hip hop songs I wrote with Evan that talk about, you know, um, I don't, I'll say Gucci. There we go. Right. Gucci. Oh, that's the one. So I've just now narrowed my search quite specifically to exactly the song that I'm looking for. All Gucci. Right. I'm going to click that song. Here's what I want to show you that I think uh, that I really love about this. Obviously, you can see that we have done the emotion analysis. We can see how many times it's been viewed. We can see how many times it's been played. We can see how many times the pitches have been listened to. We can, we can actually look at the pitch history of the song. We can see how many times it's been pitched. We'll go through that in a minute. Here's all of the relevant information we already know. Um, but here's what's cool. I can now track the cuts and sinks. I know what the value is, is of that placement. But also, here's every playlist that I've pitched that to. And I'm going to show you how to do playlists. That's really, really easy. We just got to kind of go through one thing at a time. So these are all of the different playlists that it has been assigned to. And here is, of course, we were showing you before lyrics. Here is all of the lyrics. So let's just do this um, even very, very specifically. Um, I'm going to look up the word paparazzi, right? So again, just to go back and, and kind of re reformat ourselves here. If I say, hey, I need to find any songs. Did I spell that right? No, paparazzi. I hope I spelled that right. I'm going to find any songs that talk about paparazzi. Oh, there you go. These are all of the, oh, I've written a, one, two, three songs with the word paparazzi in it. So again, it's a great way to very instantly find anything that you are um, looking for. So let's say I'm going to go back and I've now had a conversation with, I don't know, a music manager or somebody that I've talked to and I want to create a playlist uh, for them. So let's say they want to hear all of my um, swagger hip hop songs. So I'm going to say swagger hip hop, right? Here's a bunch of my songs. I can see here there's the add to hyper audio button, which is which is is not really live at the moment, uh, but um, you get the point. Uh, I want to create a swagger hip hop playlist. I'm going to go pitch track. You see that it's been added to my pitch list over here. Pitch track, pitch track. I'm just I'm just randomly picking this up, right? Pitch track, pitch track, pitch track. Okay, whatever. So I've now created this this list of songs that I'm about to share. I'm going to write. Uh, September swagger hip hop, right? Hip hop. Okay. Now I can then do a couple things. I can straight away create a playlist. I'm going to do that anyway. You can see at the bottom playlist added, right? And now I can say, I want to share. Guess what? It's going to say, I can't share it because I haven't added any information. I'm going to say, I'm going to email this to me and, uh, uh, love these. Uh, and, um, kids say this, they are, dope. So, I, you know, I just want to, I want to be like very cool and consistent with the vernacular of the youth today. So I'm going to do that because I need to, you know, self-validate. 
and I'm going to share. You're going to see pitch successfully sent. This now pitch list has been emptied, and I can now track a couple things. Here's the first thing. I'm going to go to my playlist. I've just created the September Swagger Hip Hop playlist. It's right there at the top, right? I can do a couple things. I'm going to open up this playlist. I can brand it. So I can say, well, I want to add this image. I can go and add photos. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, this seems to be my, my classic. Um, perfect. You just, uh, there we go. I'm going to do that. I've now added a photo. And you can, again, like Doron, who we saw has a really cool uh, graphic. We can, you know, he can put his stuff. He can brand that playlist. Then you could share it a couple ways. One is you can actually enter an email address. And they do not have to be a Midio member. You can, you can share it externally. Or you can literally share the URL. You could post it on your social media. You can do whatever you want. Uh, or you can, of course, just add it into any email that you might send out. Um, what's the difference between the two is when you share that playlist, you are basically granting somebody access so that whenever you update, if I were to, let's say, update my September Swagger Hip Hop playlist, and uh, again, I'm looking at Glenn, I see him there, and Glenn has been, this playlist has been shared with Glenn. Every time I update it, he will get notified, again, even if he's not on Medio, he'll get notified Justin Gray updated his September Swagger Hip Hop playlist. So again, it's if you create relationships with music supervisors, it's a great way uh, to keep them apprised of what it is exactly that you're doing. Uh, and again, you can do a couple things, like if you wanted to add tracks specifically to that playlist, again, very simple, exact same philosophy, exact same concept. We've already gone through that. Here's what I want to show you that's really cool, though. So remember we talked about earlier, again, I'll just do this, talked about, I'm going to open up the song Best Day Ever here real quick, right? We talked about the emotion analysis of the song, right? So if I start the song, and by the way, this is on a second by second basis. So it doesn't just mean, well, overall, the song is 59% energetic um, and 15% sad. No, it's second by second. So for example, watch, I'm going to press play. Right? So you can see, for example, let's just look at aggressive 20.77. Now, if I go to the end of the song, these numbers change. It's all uplifting. It's significantly up uplifting, significantly energetic, significantly happy. It is not scary. It is not aggressive. It is not calm. And you know what? Let's listen to it for a minute. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. So I'm going to go back again to the playlist that we just pulled this from, right? So when we look at Best Day Ever, Welcome to the Wildlife, all of these songs, we can now go take all of that, those 10,000 different metadata points and attributes that we've discovered, and we can now look and see how these compare by an overlapped histogram on each other. So we can see the accuracy of how closely they match. Now, why is this so important? Because when we launch Hyper Audio and someone discovers the song Best Day Ever, they, go, they can go, hey, I want more songs like that. They click one button and it automatically processes a whole brand new playlist of songs using that as our basically center point and our anchor for every other song that follows it. Why is that also so important? Because Hyper Audio is not specific to a single user. So again, I'm just looking, I see, I just see Glenn and Rob and Toby. I'm going to use them because they're the ones that are up. So if Glenn has a song that somebody goes, oh, I love that song. I want more of those. They can discover a Rob song. They can discover a Toby song. And we can help kind of support each other in creating opportunity for everybody else. Um, again, you can go through and look at other different playlists that you've done. Again, see how songs correlate to each other within those playlists. Um, this is why this is so important. I wanted to do, this is actually one of my favorite ones to do, um, is, uh, and by the way, yeah, we, we keep all of your playlists uh, there as well. So this is actually one of my favorites because this is a playlist that I put together of ballad pop for Chinese artists. Now, what I want you to notice here, which is real, you guys heard the song Best Day Ever. We just listened to it briefly. It's this kind of fun, up-tempo, hyper stylized hip hop song. Well, look, I deliberately put it on this playlist. There's Best Day Ever. There's Best Day Ever. You can see how, how closely correlated all of these other songs are, except Best Day Ever, which is completely opposite of everything else. So again, it's just a great way to show and identify how the AI is working to help you automatically or automatically understand your catalog and how we're going to use that to leverage helping you find more opportunities for placements. Um, 
So that is how playlists work. And if I wanted to, let's say really quick, again, I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna, I don't know if I have any happy playlists. I'm going to search. Oh, there you go. I typed in happy immediately. Here comes my happy songs playlist. Uh, and here comes all of the songs that are affiliated to that happy songs playlist. I find it hard to believe a song called Bloodthirsty. Again, that might have been a um, an example that I was trying to make. Uh, but, you know, so here's all of the songs that are on my happy playlist. Or I want to say I want to find a quirky song. So I'm going to type the word quirky. Boom, here comes all my quirky songs that are on my playlist. Spend time, build your playlist, make pitches. You don't have to pitch and playlist. You can just literally playlist. Uh, that's cool. Let's go to pitches. So you guys saw that I just pitched uh, the September Swagger Hip Hop playlist to Justin Gray five minutes ago. I can see that there's six tracks. I can see it's not been played. I can see that it is active. I can see that it has yet to be opened. So I'm going to call Justin and give him hell for not opening the playlist that I just sent him. The point is, the reason why we do that is because it allows the songwriters and the people that are pitching the songs to have a little bit of insight. Are my songs being listened to? Are they being streamed? Are they being accessed? Are they being downloaded? Now, if you have a good relationship with a music supervisor, I can go to them and say, hey, uh, for example, Adam, who is uh, our, our director of customer experience who's on this call, Adam, you never opened up that playlist I sent you. And he'll be like, ooh, thanks, sorry, I'm gonna do it right now. So it's again, it's a great way to, to, to sort of stay on top of your business, stay on top of your admin. And then you can do a couple of cool things. I can view the pitch details, right? This is the pitch. These are the songs that I sent, right? But I also, I'm gonna go back again and I can view things like, I wanna show the tracks on that pitch, right? Or I wanna delete that pitch, or I wanna create a playlist from that pitch that I just made. There's a lot of things that you could do there. But what is the most important thing is you can actually track your activity and know where and who uh, and when songs were listened to. You could do things too, like preparing an export if you wanted to do this. Again, this is a little bit of an advanced um, uh, feature where you can say, well, I want to extract a CVS file. Uh, I want to extract, I have to go to my, I have to go to my um, pharmacy today. I want to extract a, a file showing all of my activity of every, of every song that I have uh, pitched between this period. And I want to see if it's been open. And I want to track it. Maybe you want to do it. Maybe you don't, uh, you know, perhaps you do, but where that actually is quite important is when I go to my all tracks, you can actually say, hey, uh, again, so we talked about um, hip hop songs with Evan, right? I'm going to I'm going to search that here as well. Here comes all my hip hop songs with Evan. I'm going to select all. Now, again, if you're getting into a music pub, if you're getting into a publishing deal or you have an administrative partner or if you are, let's say, um, have a deal with uh, Song Trust or, or Centric or one of these companies or maybe it's a distributor that's doing your publishing, it's a great and easy way to create a determination on what it actually is that they are going to be collecting on your behalf. So I've just said, for example, here's all my hip hop songs. I'm, I've selected them all. I'm going to prepare that export. Uh, it's going to, well, that was, I don't know, one second. I'm going to download that Excel sheet. Boom, I've just opened this Excel sheet uh, and I've created that export. Uh, I open that up, give me a moment. And I've just now exported all of these. These are all of the hip hop songs that I've written with Evan. Here's all of the writer information. Here's all of the publisher information. Here's any of the information that we've captured all in one document. So again, if you are a music publisher, if you're a songwriter with partners, this is a great way to, instead of going, oh, I got to go back and figure out my catalog and what they get and what they don't get and which are their rights and which are not their rights. This is a great way to do it literally uh, in under five seconds. It's pretty cool. And there's a few ways to do it too. You can, you can actually, um, uh, um, extract it uh, by date as well if you wanted to. So you just didn't have to search it that way. There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, let's go to projects because that's actually a very big component of what we do here. It's a, it's our goal to um, to help generate revenue. You know, we have talked about it on different webinars. It is, it's, it's not easy. It's very competitive. But if you do get through and you get music that gets picked, um, you know, it can be it can be very, very lucrative. So, uh, again, just to create a, a bit of a reality um, around it, it is hard, but it is worth it. So here is an example of some briefs that that have been available and that are currently available. There's currently two. Some of you might be going, well, how come I don't see all these same briefs that you do, Justin? Well, because I'm an admin, so I actually see briefs that have ended. Um, and you guys may not see briefs that are that have ended. Um, some might, some might not. 
But here is, for example, a major tech company brief. This is a brief that just came in. Uh, and, uh, how, and, and just so that you understand the process on our side, when songs are submitted to briefs, we, we listen, we curate those songs, and we put forth the best songs that work uh, most um, uh, uh, specifically for the briefs. Why do we do that? We do that because it's very important to maintain a level of credibility with us and our partners as they're looking for us. If we just send them everything, uh, A, there's too many songs for them to go through. And they want to make and we want to make sure that when a song does get through our first layer of, of feedback, that they know that we're delivering great music to them. Um, that's very, very important. That's how we maintain our credibility with our partners, especially when we have projects like, like, like this, which is a $200,000 US budget. Obviously, you can imagine that's extremely competitive. Uh, it's a lot more competitive than, let's say, something that might be a $500 budget or a $250 budget. And those are also, by the way, challenging, but they're worth it. You got to do it. It's a validation of what you do. So anyway, let's go back here. Here we give a very, a pretty specific context to what it is uh, that they're looking for. In this case, looking for inspiring, uplifting, positive, instrumental, atmospheric dream, looking for tracks that feel dreamy, beautiful, uplifting, and positive with a hint of unexpected, mysterious amazement. We don't want anything too atmospheric, haunting, or sleepy. It should still feel optimistic, inspirational, and hopeful, primarily looking for instrumentals. Now, when you learn to understand what that says, you'll be able to then go pitch these songs. Um, now, when you pitch a song, really simple. I've opened up the project, I go to, Pitch to project. Click that. I've just now opened up my whole database of songs. Now I want to find what did they ask for, right? Positive uh, instrumental. Let's see if I have them. Search, right? I actually don't. Let's see if I have positive. Uh, there we go. Here's a couple positive ones, right? Big picture. I'm going to say that one. Uh, I'm going to say uh, smile. I'm going to say. Um, uh, paradise, right? Uh, and I have 80 more, but I'm just going to use those for now, right? I'm going to go back up. I want to make sure that I add my message. Here are some positive songs. Also have instrumentals available upon request. There we go. Okay. I've now submitted that song to that project, right? I can close that. I've now submitted that song to the project. Our a and &R on the other side is going to now get those songs. They're going to determine if any of those songs can be passed on to our partners. Um, now, again, I could do things like I could download that if I wanted to separate that. I can look at the pitches again, right? You get the point. Um, that's how you pitch to a project. But I want to show you something else that we've done that's really cool. You can actually create your own project. So if you are, let's say, a songwriter and you uh, are only do music, Right. You could create a project saying, hey, songwriter looking for, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, top liners, right? Top liners are people that write lyric and melody. Or you could say, hey, I'm a songwriter, but I need a producer. So you can actually create your own projects within the platform. Very easy. You go create project. Up pops this window. You enter your information. By the way, all of this is going to be put up on our YouTube. So you can always go back and look at it later at another point. Um, I know we're going through a lot. But you'll see the learning curve is actually not as intimidating. And once you start getting into it, you'll see it's pretty easy to use. Um, you create any of your information in your project, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can actually include people as watchers, meaning people that are uh, able to track the activity of your project. But you can also ex in invite people externally. So if somebody is not on Midio, you can actually email them uh, and you can pull them into the project. So again, we wanted to make sure that you didn't have to be on Midio in order to share your music. Let me rephrase that. We wanted to make sure that you could share your music with people that are not on Midio, is my point. Um, so, uh, and then of course you save that. And once you save that, if you guys have seen our projects emails, which I'm assuming that you have, uh, that gets blasted out to about 5,000 people right now um, who then have access to coming in and submitting to your project and, and eventually, hopefully, knock on wood for you, uh, you find some cool collaborators. And of course, you can then identify your projects versus other projects um, that are available on the platform. We've already gone through um, our AI stuff where we've shown you how we correlate that song to song within playlists. 
Uh, and then let's open up. I'm going to go backwards for a minute and go, we'll go back to licenses for a second. But let's go to network because network is actually a really important part of our process. So uh, I'm using Duran here because, um, he, again, I can see him right now. Um, we might already be uh, partners, but let's say uh, Rob Lewis. We'll go find Rob Lewis here, right? Um, uh, I see Rob Lewis. I'm assuming that's you, right? Rob at rob-lewis.net, right? So, hey, I want to add him to my team. Or I want to add him to my network, or I want to send him a note, or I want to just see his profile, right? So I'm going to see his profile for a minute, right? This is why you need to make sure that your bio is up to date because I can find you, right? But I'm going to go back now, and I want to add Rob to my network. Oh, let's do that again. I'm going to add him to my network. Confirm. Rob actually now just got a notification. Uh, well, maybe not the second, but Robert will get a notification saying, hey, Justin Gray wants to add you to his network. Uh, and then he can accept it. And when he accepts it, I'll, if he were to log in now, he'll see that. And if he accepts it, I would log back. I'll log back in and he'll say, Rob Lewis accepted your network request. So now we can do things like collaborate together um, on, um, on projects. Uh, I can add him to my uh, my team, which will allow him to have access to my music and to be able to pitch my songs and we can collaborate that way. Again, imagine uh, LinkedIn, right? That's kind of like the concept here. So uh, we have created different relationship levels. One is, we, as we talked about, is my team. Then we have publishers. These are publishers that all have an interest in songs that I've written. Uh, so it might be, excuse me, 120 Publishing. BMG, Downtown, Downtown Music, Razor and Tie, Sony ATV. Then we have network. As you saw, I just added Rob to my network. Um, these are my network relationships, right? Then I have my collaborator relationships. Uh, these are all of the people that I've that have either attributed a collaboration to me or I've attributed attributed a collaboration to them. So it's a great way for me to track all of my collaborators. Uh, and again, I can go and and view profile, I can send them a note. So I can look at here's all the songs that I wrote with Pam Shane. Here is her bio. Um, when I pitch a song, guess what? She now will get notified again. We've kind of gone through that. So that's how network goes. Uh, and that's how network works. Um, and again, you'll see here the notifications. You can see the submissions as created a new public project for major bank campaign, right? I'm going to go click that. It's going to take me to the project. We already talked about how this works. I'm going to go to pitch that. I'm going to go pitch that project. We see it's mid tempo, emotional, empowering. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go again. I'm going to find mid tempo, emotional, um, soulful, right? Search. I don't have any of those, so I probably won't pitch a song. Again, side note: don't pitch a song that they're not asking for. You will make enemies. I promise. Unfortunately. Uh, and then finally, we have licenses. These are any of the songs that have been licensed, uh, and and we can um, and and we and we track those licensing. So I cannot license my own track, but when I send uh, a song to somebody, I could see, for example, I think I use this as an example. Um, I've licensed the song for one dollar for the movie Star Wars. I did not license it for one dollar to the movie Star Wars, but you get the point. So this is a, a great way for you to track where all of your licenses and all of your activities have actually um, happened. So that is kind of the overarching view. I do see some questions that have come in. So I'm going to stop my screen share here and try and go hit uh, some of these questions. Um, thank you very much for being patient, you guys. And let's go hit some questions. First question, EJ, um, are, if there are multiple people, do you put everyone's IPI in or one of the collaborators? That's an excellent question. When a collaborator that you're using on platform, and by the way, you can send an invite to a non video member as a collaborator just to keep track of that collaboration. So let's say, uh, let's say EJ, you've collaborated with, um, uh, I don't know, Jenny Smith, making that name up. And Jenny Smith is not on video, but you worked with them. You could say, Hey, I've Jenny at Jenny Smith.com as a collaborator. I'm tracking her. I want to make sure that she, uh, that her percentage is represented. And then she'll actually get a, a notification that says, Hey, EJ has added you as a collaborator. You can click here to claim your profile. She doesn't have to, but when she does, that song will show up. Now, the point is, if you collaborate with people that are on video with you um, and they've entered their information, you don't have to do that. That's the whole point. If you've collaborated with Rob and with me and we've entered our, our IPI information, that's all of that information is co-joined co and co-linked in one point of information for that song. So no, you don't need to worry about that. That's the whole point. We want to make it simpler. Um, 
Sonez. Uh, by the way, you guys should track. You guys should follow each other. We're creating a little bit of a um, of a universe here. So I'm actually going to put my IG uh, at I am Justin Gray. By the way, this all really is about just me trying to build Instagram followers. So um, I apologize for this in advance, but this is really what it's about. Um, going backwards here, yes, Connor, Mideo X is a really cool idea. Please, you guys, this stuff is free for you. Take advantage of it. I promise you, these are transformational events. I I guarantee it. Um, uh, next question, Sonez. What if one of your collaborators are not a Mideo member and you want to add them in the split? Well, okay, I kind of just suggest, told you that. So the idea is, if you have their email address, put them in, add them as a collaborator. I'll do this really quick here. I'll do I'll do a, a quick screen share. I don't know why I just opened Spotify accidentally. I meant to open up Zoom. Um, <laughs> uh, quick screen share. So let's say now I'm going to add a collaborator to a song. Um, we'll add them to uh, this song, Take It Easy, right? So uh, I uh, am going to add, um, I don't know who I'm going to add. I'm going to use a Mailinator account because uh, I'm going to add, um, what did I say, Jenny Smith? I think I said Jenny Smith, right? Okay, so I'm going to go look for Jenny Smith. <laughs> well, there's a Jenny Carr. Okay, I'm going to look for a crazy name. Uh, there we go. Can you imagine if there's somebody named? That person doesn't exist, right? No users to display. I go to invite. I'm going to say, hey, AQWS and uh, SWAQ, and I'm going to add their AQWS at Mailinator dot com and i've just now um i've just now added them even though they're not a collaborator song send right boom uh, the request is inv invalid because i probably used a mailinator account that we're blocking the point is you can just add anybody even if they're not an actual video member you could track their collaborator uh you could track their split and um and you're off to the races so uh in 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 easy as that um, I'm going to stop that share. Let's go back and answer some more questions. Uh, Connor Murdoch, does Mideo Cloud Sync with Disco, if I have catalog stored there, or is Disco more of a competitor trying to navigate the many platforms out there right now and try to choose what I actually need to have? It's a great question, Connor. Um, the, the answer to the question is Disco does some things very well. Uh, we do anticipate doing an integration with them at some point. Right now, uh, we could be seen as competitive, although we do significantly more in terms of AI and data management. Disco is an excellent platform for pitching songs, uh, has been widely received by the music supervisor community. Um, but uh, it's in terms of a, a sort of an A to Z, uh, no pun intended, um, uh, pro, uh, pr uh, uh, platform for songwriters. Uh, we're obviously much more robust. As I'm sure if you have any experience with disco, you can you can probably see that. Does that share, and Connor has another question, does that shareable URL for the playlist allow direct download? Uh, yes, it does. They will click to that link, and uh, those songs can then be downloaded on the other side. Correct. Um, Rob Lewis, do people you pitch to see the emotional analysis? Uh, no. They do, however, have access to that histogram through Hyper Audio because we're using that as a uh, validator for the fact that we're helping them discover music that is like or similar to. So, uh, so no, when you're pitching a song through Midio directly, they don't see the emotional analysis. When you are, um, um, uh, p uh, when your song is discovered through Hyper Audio, yes, they do see that. Um, sorry, emotional analysis. Yes, sorry, my bad. Yes, they do see that. I apologize. I meant to. I meant to talk about the uh, the, the dynamic uh, analysis. Yes, they do see the emotional analysis, so they can actually see where the song, uh, how it ebbs and flows, and how the dynamics of the song progress uh, from second to second. Sorry. Yes. Apologies. We'll clean that up later. Uh, Connor Murdoch, is Hyper Audio going to be curated, or or can anyone get in? Uh, great question. Hyper Audio. So if anybody has any experience uh, dealing with um, trying to get into music libraries, it's very hard. Uh, and uh, it's not particularly oftentimes successful. Hyper Audio, Hyper Audio is a platform that is available for everybody. Um, the, the, uh, 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 it, so it, it is non-exclusive in that sense. Also, it's non-exclusive in the sense that you can have your music available elsewhere too. We are, we are not trying to deal with that. Um, is it curated? It is going to be curated by automation and, and, and data. So songs that are uh, more highly rated uh, are going to be more discoverable. Songs that are are more accurate to the search are going to be are going to be scored higher on ratings. 
Um, but uh, I hope that answers your question. But uh, pitches within platform, as you as you saw, are curated. We want to make sure that um, uh, it's a different experience. Uh, we want to make sure that the songs that effectively we're pushing out uh, are, are kind of have our stamp of approval. The songs that are being pulled from Hyper Audio, um, uh, there's a little bit of, of um, uh, we don't want to limit the opportunity for songs to be discovered uh, in that way. Um, uh, okay, uh, so Daniela asked a question that so that we answered for Sonas. I hope I hope that I uh, answered that for you. Um, um, I have zero people on my network. How do I reach out if I don't have a person's email? Um, that's a great question. You can search for names. So, for example, Daniela, you can search for my name on the network, and and you can request me uh, for your network. Um, you can uh, try and you know create. Um, uh, relationships that way. Uh, the goal is to, to 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 help build. It's 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 not it's it's not as simple as, as LinkedIn. And quite frankly, we're working on ways to make it easier uh, and simpler. Um, but for example, if you've seen um, if you're following our social media posts and you've seen us highlight certain uh, certain artists, they're on platform. Go find them, collaborate with them, become friends with them. Um, if you've not um, yourself submitted to um, <clears throat> to try and be a featured artist or songwriter. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, give me a moment here, you guys. A lot of talking. I feel so bad for my wife. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, you know, put in the work, you know, try and put in the work and try and see if you can create those relationships. Um, the next question from Connor, uh, thanks for this clarification as well. So there is curation, right? Okay. So we did that already. Um, uh, Brent has asked a question directly, but Brent, I hope it's okay if I share this with the team because I think that this is a really good question. Um, he asks, if my pitch makes it through vetting to, cl to clients, will I be notified either way? 100%. Yes. Uh, we Typically, when you make a submission, uh, the process is we acknowledge your submission. Um, if your song makes it through, we acknowledge that we have passed it on to our clients. Uh, and if the song doesn't make it through the, the initial vetting process, we will also let you know and usually give you the reasons uh, why it hasn't gotten through. It might not be accurate. It might be um, the, uh, the, 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 the caliber of the production isn't quite right. There could, there could be various reasons. Uh, again, it's important for us to make sure that the music that we share is at the quality that they're expecting because the, when your music gets through, we want to make sure that they're listening with the right bias, if that makes sense. Uh, Toby Toon asks a question. I have 25 pitches, none except for one have no plays. Why is that? Um, that's a great question. Actually, we have a weird issue with our play counts. They are getting listened to. Um, so I apologize uh, if we're not dealing with that. We're actually doing a um, just a quick side note on, on building websites. Strangely, um, when you make certain adjustments and tweaks on the coding, for sometimes weird things happen like play counts don't show up. Uh, but I can assure you everything is being listened to, but we will definitely go in um, and uh, and make sure to, to to look into that. So thank you, Toby, for bringing that up. I appreciate that greatly. Um, there's me again with my obnoxious Instagram handle. Um, uh, Toby's asked a great question. How many pitches have actually been selected from this site? Uh, not enough, unfortunately. Um, we, we've probably submitted... Uh, I don't have the number, but I can get that number to you. We've probably submitted uh, 300 songs for, for opportunity. Uh, I would say um, we've probably placed about five. Uh, I know that that sounds low. It's actually pretty high. If you were listening to our Midio U event with uh, Carla Downs last week, um, you know, typically a music supervisor will look at 500 songs before they choose one. So, um, but that's, again, part of our process with Hyper Audio, launching Hyper Audio is, uh, because we are going to have uh, these songs available publicly for licensing, we're actually building relationships with people like uh, uh, major major networks, major advertising agencies, uh, major YouTube and production companies, uh, so that they can come in, find songs, and license them directly. So we do anticipate that number going up significantly. Um, Glenn McLeod, emotion analysis hasn't worked for me lately. Can you speak to that? I love it, but it only worked for the first song I uploaded. Yeah, so we have a we 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 have a little bit of a backlog that should be unclogged in the next uh, you know hopefully week or so. Uh, we've been, I guess it's a good complaint. Um, although I did manage, I did 
make a plan with myself not to complain this week, but we're about to upload close to 170,000 songs. So every song has to get analyzed on the way in. That doesn't mean that yours shouldn't be analyzed um, uh, uh, right away. So we are working with that literally this morning before this call, I was texting with our CTO. So uh, thank you for continuing to be patient on that, Glenn. We're, we're building and we're growing. So we, you know, we're, we're, we're thankful for, for, for people like you guys. And if you guys are having issues, guys, hit the, hit the little, the little, cute, quirky, smiley face question box. Um, and we'll make sure to, to, to be responsive. We have an excellent CX team led by Adam, who is on this call with us right now, who is um, vigilant and diligent about getting these um, these these things handled. Um, Toby Tune, again, it looks like most pitches ask for songs with lyrics. Is there a call for instrumentals only? Well, we did kind of go through a pitch that was looking for an instrumental. So, yes, uh, and and it is always good to also have an instrumental. Uh, but, you know, again, if you, uh, quick side note, it's not really what this is about. But if you're watching TV, stop f skipping the commercials, start shazamming the commercials, and start really paying attention to how songs are being used in film and TV. Um, it's, it, it's, it's actually pretty eye-opening and enlightening. Uh, Connor, can you share a playlist and disable direct downloading? Um, you, you can, uh, but that is currently not activated on our platform, but I do like that idea. So what you're saying is basically, Connor, is can you create a streaming only uh, um, playlist? Uh, yeah, you can. Yes, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, and um, we can uh, connect with that more specifically um, after this call. You guys have given, I've given you my email address. Please hit me there. Um, thanks, uh, Daniels. Thanks. So you have to know someone first. It does help. Uh, but, you know, you'll grow. And then, you know, w w one thing that we're planning to do is if you see my network, you're gonna, I want you to be able to see people in other people. Here's other people in Justin's network. We're actually going to start creating part of our AI is to be able to start putting together saying, hey, Daniela, you should know Toby and Carly and Glenn, right? Connect. Um, so we are, our goal is to help build those, uh, those networks for you. Carly, uh, Carly Thomas asks, do we need to write a pitch for each submission? No, you don't. That's the whole point is that you can once you every song you write you upload it to the, to the to the platform once you upload the song to the platform that song can be pitched a million different times uh, again philosophically try and stay within the parameters of what they're asking for in the pitch uh you won't make any friends pitching you know i'm making this up country edm to something that's looking for down tempo emotional songs you know you won't make any friends doing it that way so try and stay within the context of the pitch. Sometimes that's a reason why a lot of pitches won't get through is because they're just not maybe totally right um, for what um, our partners are looking for. Um, uh, Glenn says the CX team has been great. They have been, yes. Uh, Rob, great question. Uploading WAV files gets denied, MP3 only. Yes, correct. For now it's MP3 only, Rob, but uh, as we launch officially our Midio Plus, Midio Plus members can upload WAV files. Um, MP3 is for non Midio Plus members. Uh, uh, MP3 for non Medio Plus members only, but if you are a Medio Plus member, which you guys all will be uh, when we launch it officially, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be able to have the ability to upload waves, correct. Carly, thanks. Brand new to this. Well, Carly, we're happy you're part of our little community of weirdos. We're grateful for you. Uh, I mean that in the most uh, 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 endearing way. Uh, I'm one of them, so what can I say? Um, Guys, uh, thank you so much. I'm going to, because it's way up at the top now, I'm going to put my email address back in here. Again, um, hit me if you need me. I love weirdos too, Carly. Um, we're, the, we're, we're, we're much more fun at parties, um, <laughs> I think. Oh, that's, that's good cold coffee. Um, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, if you have not signed up, please sign up for Midio X. It's, I promise you it's gonna be amazing. We have one mentor confirmed who's fantastic. Um, he's a great songwriter that I met many years ago. He was in a rock band that I was producing, even though I don't really do a lot of rock music. Uh, he came to me about five or six years ago, maybe a little bit se seven years ago, and really wanted to get into, he wanted to get out of the rock band, into getting into music production. Um, and I've watched him grow incredibly over the last five years. Uh, he is an extremely prolific songwriter. 
He's worked with some incredibly cool artists and he is constantly doing music for film and TV that's getting placed. Uh, I think he's going to be an incredible resource to collaborate uh, with us uh, in a couple weeks. You are really going to like him. He's a super nice guy. He's a producer. He's a writer. He's a top liner. He's kind of like an all rounder. Um, excellent, excellent uh, addition to our Midio X faculty. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> and a great way to know about these events is, um, by the way, I want to just show this really quick just while we get off because I, I, I love that this happened. Uh, I'm going to do a share. Look what happened, right? While we were on the call. Ejimore Arushe, oh, oh my gosh, I hope I got that right. I see EO, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping I got that right. Wants to add me to their network, confirm. Sonia Mehta wants to add me to their network, confirm, right? So now we're all confirmed, I love it. Uh, we're all in each other's network and we can communicate with each other. So um, uh, I see Rob didn't add me yet to, the, to his network. He didn't accept it yet, which is crazy. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to talk about Rob because he's on the call, but honestly, I don't think anybody really likes him that much. But whatever, we're just happy to have you here. And uh, by the way, if you don't know who Rich Christina is, Rob, look him up. You are a dead ringer for Rich Christina. Um, and, uh, and if you don't know him, you should know him. Trust me. Also, look him up. Um, thanks, you guys. Have an awesome Saturday. We did go a little bit longer than expected. By the way, Doran, uh, I've been listening to some of your music. It's fantastic. Whatever you're doing, bro, keep doing it. Really, really good. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of the caliber of people that we have working with us. Um, you guys are really fantastic. And, uh, you know, we're all friends here. So, you know, when you log into your profile, you're going to see a banner at the top. It's going to uh, allow you to... Um, apply to uh, uh, to uh, uh, register for Medio X. Please, please do. Uh, please come to the Medio U events. They are really enlightening, um, and uh, and we're going to continue doing them. We have a ton of great content on our YouTube. Some amazing conversations we've had over the course of the last um, about eighteen months. Uh, really um, happy to be here. Happy to help you guys. So thank you so much.